So what do you get when you cross pollinate a Milwaukee seven and a quarter inch compound sliding miter saw with hood pins, auto hood pins, and a large mouth funnel? Combine that with a hefty dose of creativity. Sure dang, I got a good one I'm about to show you. You get this non-traditional compound sliding miter saw station. Check it out. I am absolutely thrilled to bring this to you. You are either scrolling the great vastness known as YouTube to get ideas and contemplating building one yourself, or you just want to get some creative ideas for the uh, future build. Either way, I've got some extremely unique features that I think may not work for all of you, but it will work for some of you. And when it does, I think it's going to be an explosion of awesomeness because the reality is this is not your traditional miter saw station. For me, there's a lot of different perspectives that I needed to consider. And just like you, as you guys are getting ready to do your miter station build, there's a lot of things that you have to consider. So if you go to the traditional miter stations that are out there on YouTube, most of them have some very traditional and similar features. Mine has some of those features, but it's also got some ones that are very unique for my specific build. For some of you that may know, if you've watched some of my other videos, specifically on my Airsoft, one of the ways that this shop gives back, and guys, I think through it, we do all this stuff on organization, but what good is having this if you're not doing something with it? So what is that something? So here's my ask for you. Yes, I'm talking directly to you. If you're looking at this screen, I'm talking to you. What? is part of the purpose of your shop, right? Is it just for yourself or how do you pay back the community? So for me, one of the things that we do is we sponsor, we invest in a group in our community called the Band of Brothers where we honor veterans and we have the different kids get together with the adults and we just have an amazing time of fellowship and community. And oftentimes that leads me to building a variety of different structures right? Two-story forts, sniper towers, an eagle's nest, right? Bases, sandbag bunkers, all the above. So here's my challenge. And I don't know for those of you watching. So for you, do you ever have it where you need your station or your miter saw to potentially be portable, to be able to be removed quickly, if you will, right? Because let's be honest, we can bolt it down, get it as secure, but if it's so arduous to undo the high probabilities we're just not going to do it now there is another option you could just do a uh, battery operated circular saw but for my purposes I go out there so much to do projects I wanted to have a quick detach feature which we have and I'm super excited about it because I feel like it's a non-traditional way and it's never I don't know that I've ever seen it now you're about to tell me whether you think that's good or not but we are gonna be using auto hood pins. That's right, auto hood pins. Gearhead, I was thinking of you, man. Um, hey, hey, quickly, before I go further on, I wanna do a quick shout out to my fourth floor nurses. You guys are awesome. And then also to Scorpion. You've been one of my top commenters down below. Hey, for those of you that wanna give Scorpion a run for his money, make sure that you guys are leaving a comment down below um, on the video. But with that being said, guys, let's go over a few more of the features. Now that we know a priority for me was portability. So this will not be a how-to, right? I'm not gonna go through and show you specifically how to build, but rather it's gonna be more of a show and tell uh, so that you guys could get some ideas uh, regarding your own personal miter station build. But let's go ahead and let's go through some of the basic features that go with this particular one. And honestly, what makes it so unique, if you will? First of all, I wanted to make sure that when it was stowed away, it was out of the way, right? All the way back. Recently, I've gotten this one, two things. One, this is battery operated. And with this Milwaukee 5, I know well, this is an M18, but this is one of the, the five batteries, which is what they recommend. I'll get over 300 cuts with this, but here's the deal. I don't need a power source other than this particular battery. So that's super exciting <laughs> uh, for me, especially because as I go out to the land, I don't always want to bring my little generator with me. Um, and I want to be able to carry this around. The other thing from a portability perspective is this thing is 28 pounds. That's with the battery. 
28 pounds. That is phenomenal. So for me, as I'm taking these and I want to lift this up and out and carry this around, this is not all that bad. That's 28 pounds. Try that with a bunch of the other saws. You're gonna have some challenges. Okay, so portability is huge. And this one is definitely fit for that game. In my opinion, one of the better ones that are out there. Plus, I just happen to like the Milwaukee brand. It's because of you, Honey Badger. Dang it, I was, I was satisfied with my rigid brand until he came along, my brother. Um, okay, so in addition to that, you guys will notice that this is a compound sliding miter saw. And with that, means that I need to be able to extend this back, right? This arm goes to open, but here's the challenge. Where I have it now, I wanted to be able to have it on a system that allowed me to bring it out when in use and back when not in use. So you guys have already seen it by now. These are on heavy duty drawer slides, okay? You might be thinking, and I know you are, there's no support out here. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So I had to come up with a way that I could be very specific with where this stops. And that's where it came up with these spring-loaded pins. Now, if I take those and I shift those into this downward position and I move it back, when it gets right to where I want it, it's automatically gonna engage those pins on both sides, creating a very specific stopping point. So if you notice now, Along here, I've got roughly six inches that are here that can support my workload whenever I'm cutting. For me, when I do repeat style cuts, I've got this right here. I can pop this on and put this directly into place on where I want that and then I can butt up to that. That's just some walnut. What are two things that you almost always, always, use at the miter station, one being a tape measure. So I love these magnetic clips that you can use. I think these are sold in order to mount in your vehicles. For me, I use those here, and then with the metal on the back of this, it's just right there. And that way, if this is jostled or jarred, that's not gonna come off, but that is always available for me. The other thing is, oftentimes, these little circles are perfect for a marking tool when you get ready to go. So I leave that right there. So those things are always available when I need it. The other thing that I'm gonna just kind of mention is, you notice that there's a layer on, there's the drawer slide layer, which is nothing more than a piece of plywood that actually has the black laminate on it. And then I've, I've edged it with this, uh, with this walnut. And then underneath it, there's also this bottom layer. And I, I haven't attached this because I wanted to be able to show you guys. This is nothing more than a, ple than a piece of MDF that has an opening cut into it that would allow it to receive this large mouth funnel. Okay, just like that, that's it. Okay, and then with a Forstner bit, I've just recessed these holes in it as to be, or basically holsters, if you will, or a place for these quick release mechanisms, right? Let me show you what that actually looks like. So that way, when I am going out to the land and I need to take the saw, I don't wanna lose these, right? That would be an easy one to do. So I'll actually put all these little quick release clamps and I'll put them in those respective spots and then I can take this with me, um, do a quick detach and the saw is mine. And then when I get it back, super easy setup. Just put these back into place. Let me show you this mechanism. Just like that. All right. So another important feature for me is, as this is in its deployed position, if you will, or in use, is I actually have this large mouth funnel in the back. And obviously that allows for sawdust. And again, this is a gravity feed sawdust. And you can see underneath there, there's actually a container that goes, and the sawdust would just drop into that little bin. So for the bottom, 
what I did is this was an opening and I want to do two things. You notice that I had an end piece, if you will, or, or kind of scrap that I'm not gonna keep, the one that I'm gonna commit to the bonfire. So I got another scrap that I want to keep. So this, there's two different ones. When we're doing this, oftentimes that just goes on the floor for some of you. So I wanted to come up with an idea on how to separate the two. So if you notice, I made this bin. The back one, which is where the funnel drop through, is for all the trash, and that actually has a trash bag. And what you'll notice is that these trash bags have these little clips in it. And on the front and the back, I just take this little scrap piece of three quarter inch um, plywood and I'll put it up around just like this and I'll flip it on over and then put it up into this clamp, just like that, which keeps it open. It keeps the mouth of the bag open. So this will fill up with sawdust and stuff I want to throw and at the end of the day, I can just take it and then go and use it for such. And when I'm actually doing cuts and I'm actually done with a piece, then this one, I can put it down in that bottom area right here. And then maybe once a week or however I need to, once it gets filled, I can actually take this and empty it out. So I wanna show you guys, I actually got these low profile wheels so that I have more space um, towards the ground, right? If I were to have it at the very top here, then I'd be losing this entire distance of depth, which, hey, it matters. So I've got that on all four corners, these low profile wheels. These are actually the same ones that I used on the actual, if you can see through the Bora centipede over there, you can actually see with that pullout for the stage. Hey guys, if you haven't seen that stage build, definitely check that one out. Um, that is a genius way of doing storage as you can see. But again, I've got those on there. It keeps it nice and low so I maximize my usage of the space. And then of course what I wanted to do is I just applied a drawer pull so it kind of goes with the rest of the theme, if you will. So again, the front bin is nothing more than just an open empty space, but again, in the back, you can see this bag that I've got on these clips. Now, let's see if I can do this one-handed, just like that, and all four of sides clip in. I didn't want it up and over just because I don't like that, that look. I like this. I feel like this is a little bit neater, especially from over here off to the side. You don't even know that it's in there. Um, but this way you've got full protection. Now you can see that from a dust collection perspective, um, this is actually one of the hose kit that I bought from Rockler that had kind of the compression fitting that you can just go on and off, right? I needed quick detach. And then honestly just connects them to these extension wands. You can get these at your local box store and I just put three of them together. They're smooth walled interior, right? As opposed to all of the ribbing, which creates resistance all the way over. And that goes over here to my shop back. Now, I'm gonna give you a super quick snippet on this particular shop back. Why? Because you probably have never seen one being used for a shop. One, this is 1250 CFM, but this is a pulse back system. This has three independent heads, if you will, or motors running inside. They're self cleaning. So, what happens is as this is running, you'll feel a thud, thud, almost like a heartbeat every five to 10 seconds. And what that is, is one of the three motors is closing down and then creates a back pulse it blows back into the actual filter. Why? Because all of the debris, the sawdust, the dirt, the um, ailments push out from the filter and then drop down to the bottom. Then if you see down at the bottom, you'll see a bag that I can just tilt the lever arm